The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the great feast of the Epiphany, which simply means manifestation or appearance, God appearing in the flesh to all peoples. These wise men who set out on this journey to find the Christ child were inspired by many things, but primarily the Holy Spirit, even though they were pagans. And they have much to teach us in our own journey, because we are, all of us, on a journey of faith. And there are many different ways that we can get lost, many different ways we can end up at a dead end. So it's important that we open our hearts to see what we can learn from these magi. The first pearl of wisdom is that they had open hearts. They were open and receptive to something beyond themselves. That yearning for something greater is very important. And it was important for them because had they been locked in their own worldly ambitions, they would never have seen any signs. They would never have gone out on a journey. They would have been too focused on their own ends. But they were open and receptive, as we must be as well. And it's not a difficult thing because God has placed this yearning in our hearts. As St. Augustine famously said, God created us for himself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in him. Secondly, the Magi didn't remain in their desires and their thoughts. They acted. They took the steps necessary to prepare their hearts, and then they actually set out on that journey. Sometimes it's safer just to sort of imagine and think what life would be if we went on this path, but never really set out. They set out, and although they were guided by a star, they really didn't know where the star was taking them. So it really was for them a journey of faith, as it must be for us as well. The star first appears, the light, in our baptism. That's why it's called the Sacrament of Illumination, where the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us and begins to shine. It becomes brighter in our confirmation because there we take ownership. We stand up and we say, this is what I want. And then it shines greatest in what we're doing here this morning, which is coming before the Lord in the Eucharist. It's in the breaking of the bread that our eyes are truly open to see Christ, and Christ is the light that guides us. So let us not remain in our own thoughts and desires, but take the steps necessary for that journey. 
The third pearl of wisdom is that they must have experienced great difficulties on this journey because it was long and hard. And just for them to set out, they would have risked their wealth and their reputation to actually follow a star, to pack up all their belongings. Their neighbors must have thought they were crazy. But even along the way, there must have been dangers. It was a long journey. And perhaps there were days or nights when the clouds were especially thick and dark so that the light was obscured. They might have lost their way temporarily, but they persevered. We must as well. No matter how long the night or deep the darkness, we are living in a time of great stress. We are called to shine and be led by the star in this journey because Christ is with us wherever we are. That doctrine of omnipresence means exactly that. Whichever path we are on, Christ is there and leading us. The next pearl of wisdom would be that they didn't travel singly, alone. The word magi is plural. The singular is magus. So there at least were more than one. We assume there's three because of the three gifts, but they traveled in a community of faith. They were seekers, and that is also important for protection. If you have more than one, you're safer. But they could also encourage one another in that journey. When one of them got down, the other would pick them up, and they would have different charisms and gifts that could supplement each other. That's why Christ, when he sent out the 70, sent them out in pairs and said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. In the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, it says two are better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Now, we have that opportunity to travel in a faith community, not just in this parish or the family of parishes, which is important, but our own close friends. Maybe we gather together. I know it's difficult in the COVID era, but there are opportunities within the family of parishes to join a small faith-sharing community, and I'm part of one. I've been for many years, even prior to my priesthood. We have those small faith communities in our family. So traveling as a community of seekers, of faithful people, is crucial. Well, when they finally arrive, they bow down and worship. And after all, isn't that why we live, why we were created? Isn't that our whole purpose of life is to come and worship as you're doing here this morning? And when we do, we lay down our gifts, which they did, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, as they gave their gifts, their hands were then empty, and they were able then to receive far more than they gave. Herod, on the other hand, was so concerned about his power. He was clutching to all kinds of things, even to the extent that he was willing to kill in order to maintain his power, and he received nothing and died a lonely death. Now, this exchange of gifts that the Magi show us today is exactly what's happening here at the Mass. We come, we lay down our gifts, we come with our prayers and our work, our week, and the contribution we make to the collection. And all of that's brought to the altar with the bread and wine, and Jesus Christ then comes, and he gives us far more than we ever could give. And we go away filled with his strength for the journey. What epiphanies did you experience this past year? It was a difficult year, but still, what epiphanies did you experience? And just to contemplate that and perhaps share it with your friends would be important. Who or what has been a star in your life this past year? How have you been an epiphany of Christ to others? How have you been a star for others? Where are you now on your journey? Are you fulfilling your mission, your call, which all of us have? to proclaim Christ? What are you willing to risk in that journey? No matter how long the night or deep the darkness, are we willing to set out 
and not play it safe and say, Lord, I'm at your disposal. And finally, like the Magi, are we traveling now on a different path? When the Magi knew that Herod was a treacherous scoundrel, and then, of course, they were also aware through the scriptures and the spirit, they took a different path home. Now, we're certainly on a different path, just in this family of parishes. We've been asked to journey together with all seven parishes and to open our hearts to each other, to bring the light that we are, because the gifts we bring are precisely our charisms, how we have been blessed by God in our baptism. Some have the gift of hospitality, some have the gift of music, some have the gift of leadership or teaching or intercessory prayer. There's dozens of these charisms that are listed in Scripture, and we have some of them. Each of us have different ones. But when we all present our gifts in the family, our family becomes an epiphany to Sarnia. And that's what we're called to be. That's the vision of the bishop, that we don't just act as a single parish concerned only about our own survival, but we embrace each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, led by the Spirit, and then manifest the love that Christ is to the wider community, those who are away from the faith and maybe not living as we would want them to live, yet we're called to reach out in love and acceptance and friendship. That's what Epiphany is. So on this Epiphany, when we begin this new year, let us meditate on these pearls of wisdom the Magi give us and open our hearts to what Christ is leading us to, love, forgiveness, and joy. And be that star for one another.